Ready? You yeah. ready, Shadia? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's my sweet tea. Oh, but yes. If you're in the UK, this is how we like our sweet tea in the US in the South. Sweet tea. This is how we like our tea. Full of ice, full of sugar. This is how we, 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 we don't drink hot tea down here. Mm -mm. Sweet and cold. I was <laughs> say like, like my husband. He ain't cold though. He's sweet though. He's sweet. Okay. Y'all want to see my outfit? Y'all want to see my outfit of the day? This t-shirt is really cute. Then I have on my my um, fleece lined sweatpants from Land's Inn in the children's section. And my brown Uggs my husband got me for Christmas. That's my outfit. That's my outfit of the day because I'm not going into wear. Hello family, welcome to my channel. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Angela. If you're not new, <laughs> you already know who I am. And let me just, did I hit my microphone? I didn't. Let me just say, it's been a minute since I've done a vlog. My vlogs are a lot of trial and error and trying to figure it out basically. So I'm just gonna give you an update of kind of some things that have been going on in my life and some things that are gonna be transpiring next week and just a, a little bit of everything. I do have some vlog. I did vlog a little bit, but most of this is going to be me talking and I have video footage of, and pictures of things that I'll be talking about. So it's been a minute. So the last time I did a vlog was before Christmas. Um, Christmas was really nice. It was really, really nice. Uh, my husband had to work the day after Christmas, so I decided, and he had, he has to leave to travel to, for work on Christmas Day. So I decided instead of celebrating Christmas on Christmas Day and cutting it all short because he has to leave to travel for work, that we would have Christmas at my house on Christmas Eve. And this is going to be my tradition from here on out. It worked out perfectly. I said I told my daughter we'll have Christmas at my house on Christmas Eve. That way you can be here and, and her husband and my grandchildren. And then on Christmas Day, you can go spend time with your in-laws, your, your sister-in-law and their family. That way you can spend a full day. You're not rushing out and um, trying to make sure you get everybody in. It'll just, it'll just work out perfect. We had a great time. And her sister-in-law and her uh, um, and her children and her grandson came over, so we had so much fun. The funnest part of Christmas was making cookie houses. I'm not gonna call them gingerbread houses because I think Teresa, who is Shadia's sister-in-law, was the only one that actually had a gingerbread house. So I told them we can spend between 30 and $35 on supplies. That's it, and it's an honest, um, uh, um, honest policy. So we didn't check receipts, but even though I had my receipts, cause they, they like try to say that we cheated. <laughs> since we won. Anyway, so we, I provided the graham crackers, the icing, which we're not gonna do next year because it was a, a mess. It was all, it was messy. I provide the graham crackers, the icing, and hot glue guns, and hot glue, and cardboard for everyone to put their house on. Now, um, what you may not know about me is that I am very, <laughs> very competitive. I don't play games with a lot of people because I'm playing to win. I don't care if you're four years old, little girl, little boy, you should not have played me. I am not going to let you win. Now, if it's my grandchildren, I will, I will fold it <laughs> and let them win sometimes, but not every time, but I'm playing to win. And, um, I had a whole strategy in my head and my daughter knows me. My son-in-law knows me. They all knew. Uh, my son knew we we're gonna strategize. I told him y'all gonna lose. Y'all gonna lose. My husband used to build houses. I am very, very creative. I had my whole, we sat down with my husband and drew out what we wanted on paper the day before and everything. And everybody knew everybody had the same time frame to come up with the concepts they wanted to come up with. And indeed, my husband and I won. Now we call randomly called three people. We randomly called three people and did not tell them whose house belonged to whom and had them to vote on the houses. First place, second place, third place, and last. 
we got the most <laughs> we got the most votes. I knew I knew I was gonna win because I, I was about that life. Anyway, that was and it took us probably two hours and it didn't seem like two hours, but everybody was working really, really hard trying to get them houses together and make them look nice. Everybody's house looked completely different, but it was so much fun. It was so much fun and I cannot wait to do it again next year. We're going to be doing that every year. That's new family tradition. We're having Christmas on Christmas Eve and we're building cookie houses. You can use whatever cookies you want, but we're going to have a money limit, but that was it. We had so much fun. What's next? My, my, my list is over here so I don't forget anything. That was it. Oh, and recently my husband works out of town and he works in Mississippi and it was like, you should fly in, fly in, then catch a, catch a Uber or drive over to Tallahassee. I flew into Biloxi. Did I flew into Biloxi? I think I flew into Biloxi. Flew into Biloxi and then drive over to Hattiesburg and then we'll stay the night. I get off, we'll stay the night. And then the next day we'll drive over to New Oops. We'll drive over to New Orleans. So we can spend the entire day in New Orleans, just out and about having some good meals and just doing a little shopping and just, just experiencing the city in the New Orleans. Cause I don't think he's ever been, but I went once for the Essence Festival and it was so, it was just beautiful. It was really, really nice. I was like, that's a great idea. I'm, I'm free for a few days. So I caught the uh, plane, my husband got me ticket and it was, I had first class, I had the very first seat on the plane, which was really nice. I had a lot of, lot of leg room, leg room. That was really nice. And so we got there and I text him, I'm on the plane, the plane's about to fly off. He was like, okay, he was working that day. You know, he flies helicopters. We was, and then we slept that night and got up the next morning and drove really early over to New Orleans. I can't remember how many hours it was and spent the whole day in New Orleans. We went shopping. <sighs> I got me a pair of shoes. I, I got, were they necessary? Absolutely not. When I put them on my feet and I walked around, are they the most comfortable? They, they aren't. Am I able to walk in them? I am. Um, did I fall in love? Immediately I did. Are they overpriced? They are but I am so happy. They made me happy. They made me smile when I put them on. They made me smile and I'm, I'm happy I got them and I will uh, get a lot of wear out of them. They just, they're they are just such a special occasion shoe. Let, let, hold on, let me show you, let me, let me, let me get them for you. Whew. If you can see. That light is bright, here they go. The little. Oh, you know what I didn't do? This is her. Look how she's chocolate like me. She, I, I, and I can't walk in. They're four inches. She, she. I fell in love. I put them on. I was like, I, I just, I can't leave them. They are going home with me. I've wanted some for a long time. I just never got them, but this was the perfect pair. It was the perfect color. And I, I just, hey, it was meant to be. I saw them, it was meant to be. So, I got them. I'll definitely be wearing those for date night and special occasions. They just make me feel so special when I put them on. So, and I just fell in love. It is what it is. Um, now, I'm gonna tell you about the, oh, when he flew to Hattiesburg, so he had actually, no, no, no. He had to work the rest, no, 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 no. I got the timeline wrong. We didn't leave the next day. The next day he had to work as well. It was the day after that we left. So the next day I spent most of the day in the hotel room just doing nothing and it was fan fantastic. I don't get to relax much when I'm at home. There's in my mind, there's always something to do. Even if I say, I'm just going to take a day off and do nothing. I'll sit down and think I probably should sweep this floor and I get up and sweep the floor, sit down, think, let me just go ahead and throw a, a couple load of clothes in the washer since I'm sitting here and watch television, let that get done. Then I got to put them in the dryer and then I'll, I'll, I'll fold them up a little bit later or and it's just always something little to do. So I never actually do nothing. So I had the opportunity to do nothing. 
I decided I'm gonna go get me some breakfast. And I'm come back and maybe I go to the mall, but the mall, I, I Googled the mall and I was like, nope, 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 not going, nope, mm -mm. They don't They don't have anything that I'm not, I don't have access to. But let me just tell you the, the, the Uber, the my Uber experience. And I started to post this on, I started to post it, but I was like, I, I just don't know. I, pro I probably shouldn't post this. And, but let me just say, first of all, um, it was horrible. I had to, I sent the message to Uber. I wish you were, there was a way you could send a picture that there's no way that you can send a picture of the car. If I was able to send a picture of the car, I think they would have given me all my money back. They gave me a $5 voucher, but that does not begin. I wanted my money back. Anyway, so the Uber driver got there in Hattiesburg and I was at the hotel and I wanted some breakfast. I, Uber, she got there and they um, pulled up and unlike Texas, they don't have a license plate in the front. So I couldn't see the back of the car. So she pulled up and rolled the window down. First of all, it threw me off because there were two people in the car. Now I've never never and i've traveled and i've ridden an uber all over the world i've never seen two people in the car but there were two females so it, i wasn't alarmed but it was just it just stopped me when i was I, I wasn't, i've never why are the two people in the car but oh okay so my mind was still and but she knew my name so i knew it was her and so i was still trying to process it all and so as i'm, I'm thinking about this i just opened the door and got in the car sat down um Get over the door, got in the car and sat down. Um, and I'm still in my mind thinking about why are there two people in the car and they pull off and, and I'm looking and the young lady in the passenger seat had the iPad with the location of where I was going. So I assumed that she was probably the daughter of the driver and she was just, her mom was trying to hustle, make a little extra, extra money, which was perfectly fine. And she was helping her since she, it was probably a new process. Obviously a new process for her. Then I happened to look down. I looked down and, and my skin started to crawl. It was the nastiest car I have ever been in in my life. There wasn't a drop of paper on the floor. It did not smell because I'm, I'm, I don't like bad scents. So I would have noticed that immediately. It did not smell. It was the nastiest car I have ever been in in my life. Now, I'm the kind of person, I really hate to hurt anyone's feelings. And uh, unless you, you do something to me, that's completely different. But if you've done nothing to, to me, I have a hard time doing something that I feel will hurt a person's feelings. Not just that, we were by then about a block and a half, two blocks from the hotel and it was cold. And all this is playing in my mind the whole time, the whole time. And now I'm, I'm, I've got my purse and I'm holding my purse like this for dear life. It was disgusting. Now I've been a nurse 20, almost 27 years now, got a little nauseated. It was that nasty. I don't like filth. I don't mind a lived in car filth. I do not like it was nursery. I'm gonna show y'all some pictures. I'm gonna show you some pictures. And I know some of y'all gonna say, I would have gotten out, gotten out. I can't get out on the side of the road. Can't get out on the side of what I'm gonna do. I, 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 was, I, I was stuck in the car. I got out of that car so quick when we, when we got to the, to the restaurant. I got out of that car so quick. I could not believe that she actually works to pick people up in a car such, like in, in, in that field. It was unacceptable. The son coming home. Hey honey, I'm gonna stop my camera. Hello family. <laughs> I'm the favorite son family, hello family. You're the only son, Owen. That means I'm the favorite. <laughs> and uh, anyway. I did report the car to Uber and they sent me a $5 voucher, but they just don't understand the magnitude of when I said the car was unclean. They have no clue. Maybe I should put it on my, on, on TikTok and tag them and, and they'll see it. And then maybe I should do that. But I didn't want to embarrass the lady. 
I, I didn't want to be mean or ugly or it was just it was just a horrible situation to be in now that that's that now but when we got to New Orleans New Orleans was be the food the food was amazing the beignets we actually got to see some street performers it was we just were just walking around the uh, the really famous streets and we heard people talking really loud and just went once walk one street over and the, the street performers were there and it was so much fun that was cute we enjoyed that then we did a bike tour where we sat in the back and the guy rode the bicycle around like the famous areas like in town like the famous areas he probably did like a maybe a two two three mile radius he did not want us to film him like i, I, don't, I don't even understand you you're pulling towards it but okay we we respected his um wishes and did not put his face on it we did ask he was like no i, I, I prefer not and um so we did that and that was really nice. We got to see um, the site, the home, the actual home site. The home is no longer there. Of I forgot the man's name, but he was the main character in 12 Years a Slave. His original home, where his home was uh, built and where it was, where he lived in New Orleans. I don't even remember if I knew um, he was from New Orleans, but that was very interesting. But uh, and we got to go into lots of lots of shops. That's where I got this little cute necklace from one of the little, little shops we went to. And we did just the walk around and enjoyed the city, enjoyed the people, the people. Everyone was so, so nice and talkative. And it was interesting to see how old the street we, streets were. Some of the streets were in the culture that was there because I grew up in North Carolina. So we don't really we don't really have any of that. But that was really nice to see the cobblestone streets and um, the people there playing music. What do you call them? Bu busters? Busters? I think they're called busters. Um, the lady, there was one lady, She, her voice was beautiful. She was sitting on the side of the street playing, uh, singing a Beyonce song. And I told Ben to go put some money in her hat. And then there were guys playing a musical instruments on other street corners and then we went into some very very nice vintage furniture shops and um that was that was amazing that was we saw i saw um vintage then there were vintage jewelry shops and but they were really expensive um i saw some beautiful beautiful i love the earrings and stuff i remember watching game of thrones and i was like oh, i love those little dainty very detailed earrings that they wore. I could wear stuff like that every day, but they were really expensive, like two to $5,000 per pair of earrings. I'm like, mm -mm -mm, can't do that. But um, just walking around to the different shops and seeing the culture, that was so much fun. That was, New Orleans was fantastic. We decided one day was definitely not enough. We'll go back because we saw an outdoor market. We drove past it. Um, well, we actually didn't drive past it. We rode past it on the bicycle, but we didn't have time to go. So next time we're going to really plan it where we're, we're there probably three days so we can really go to some um, really nice restaurants. We went to a, a really nice restaurant. The food was so good because I love, love seafood. And you know, New Orleans is right there by the water. So the seafood was so fresh. It was fantastic. So we're going to go back, but probably for three or four days. And that's, that's what happened. I guess that was probably a couple weeks ago. Now, <sighs> some stuff that's been going on with me. Now, as you all know, I'm 52, so I'm going through menopause. I do take hormone um, replacement pills and stuff, but it's just like I'm starting to have a lot of hot flashes and it's just really, I don't know, my body is just every day. It's just like, it, it reminds me of when I was younger, going on my cycle and you know, your hormone, your feelings are up and down and your body changing and, and my, one of the biggest ways that is impacting me now is my hair so i noticed and i think it was august it was my first appointment sometime in the july august that um my part you know i part my hair put it back in the ponytail that my part looked a little wider than it should look like it looked the the part was thinning the hair in the part was thin and i was like oh 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 now i've i have some older friends who had that issue and then i know my mother and a lot of the women on her side of the family, their hair thinned as they aged. And so I was like, I wonder if I can kind of postpone this part of the process or 
if there's an issue or something going on, then I need to fix it. Hold on, let me fix the close this front door. So I decided I'll go to a dermatologist to, to, just to see kind of what's going on. So I found my, my daughter goes to a dermatologist and um, it's a black, um, she's a black doctor that focuses on ethnic hair and I, that was very important for me. And so I went and I see a PA and she is fantastic. And they did a, she did a biopsy in my scalp and it came back that I do have some alopecia and some scarring. And there's no definitive diagnosis of cause. Um, some of it I feel, just from my experience, some of it I feel is hereditary. It's just, it's something that happens in, in my family, on my, on my mother's side for sure. Um, then we had a long discussion. It's probably a combination of things, a combination of hereditary um, female pattern hair loss and also from getting relaxers for years. I, I've only been natural and I say only, but it's been quite a while. My grandson is 12, almost 12 and a half. So my last relaxer was um, several months, six months or so before he was born. So I've been natural. I haven't had chemicals in my hair for 13 years. But prior to that, in between cutting off all my hair, I would have relaxers for years. For years I had relaxers and it's just not good for our hair. It damages the hair shaft. It's just the, all those, that lye or that acid on our scalp is just not good and it damages the scalp and, and causes scarring. And then some of it is from tension. For years, of course, I'm a black woman, so we got braids and all those braids have their, they, their way, they, they're, they're heavy and they're pulling at the scalp and it causes a lot of tension and pullage um, from the hair shaft as well. So it's probably a combination of all of those. So um, she put me on a treatment plan to try to reverse some of it or slow the process down. So since August, I've been once a month going in. The first couple of times it was horrible because I don't tolerate pain well. Zero, zero pain tolerance. The first, so every month for um, six months, go in and get steroid injections in my scalp because um, the pathology report came back that there was inflammation. So the, the steroid shots to decrease the inflammation. Then I have special shampoo that I have to use once a week. Then there's some drops that I have to put on my scalp every other day. And then ointment that I put on my scalp every other day. It's a, it's a, it's a very intense treatment program and it's very difficult to do all that it's very difficult to do all that when you have a lot of hair on your head and you're trying to do hairstyles i can't keep my hair pulled back in the ponytail because i need to get to my scalp to put my stuff on and then shampoo it once a week and, and all that so i was like oh, this is a lot and also so i said i'm saying all this to say i'm gonna cut my hair but um that was that is reason one number one because all the treatment that i need to do the second reason I'm going to cut my hair is because it, my hair has been shedding a lot. And I think um, when I did the research on the, the ointment and the, well, the drops, not the ointment, that your hair will shed some at first. And, but there's a, there's a lot of shedding um, and I don't mind the shedding, but I've always been one that I've always had a lot of hair. I've always had long hair. So having long hair is not, a, I have to have long hair. Um, it does not bother me not to have long hair. I've shaved my head almost bald, probably five times. And so I was like, if I can't have a head full of healthy hair, then I'll just rather have no hair. I'm gonna cut it off and just kind of start over. And then, so I shed it in the top here and then around my front edges, my, um, my edges started shedding as well, which has never happened. Even in my youth when I got braids, it never damaged my edges, never. I've been always been very, very careful not to put a lot of attention and stress on my edges because I, I wanted to make sure they were always healthy. So my edges have broken off like an inch all the way around. For what reason, I can't, I, I honestly do not know. I think it's just a combination of the hormones and uh, menopause and straight, like it's just bad. So I decided I'm just going to cut it off. When I say cut it off, I'm going to cut it all off. Now, normally this is not a problem. Again, I've done it numerous times. I think I, I find a picture where I cut my hair or, and one time me and Shadi went to the barbershop together and we got both of us cut all our hair off, but it's always been an option 
this time it feels as if I'm kind of being forced to do it. So I've, I've been struggling for the last few weeks with the idea. I've known that I'm going to do it, maybe probably last month, but getting up, I've had to get up the courage to do it. Unlike the other times I was like, just cut my hair off. Just cut it off. So I'll, I'll try to get some footage of what my hair looks like before I go to the barbershop. Now I have, uh, I used to go to the barbershop all the time, so I know that I need to wash my hair and blow dry so it's nice and clean. Because barbers hate when people come to the barbershop and their, their hair is not washed and clean. It's just nasty. And they have to clean the clippers, it's just nasty. So I'm gonna wash my hair and <laughs> blow it out so y'all can see how much hair I have. And it just, it's, it's, it's a big head of hair, but it's thin up here and up here. You can see where it's broken off in the crown and it's just it just doesn't feel healthy all over now from here on back it's very healthy but here to the front it is not and i'm just i'm just not willing to hold on to this um because i'm just not willing to do that so i'm gonna cut it all off which is gonna be very interesting because um the last time i cut my hair i had no gray hair now i have a patch here and when i parted my hair the patch went all the way back probably two to three inches which is going to be really interesting to see how it's going to grow back in. My little pick. Okay, all right. Um, well, you, you've you probably heard the saying, you can plan, but you can't predict. I had planned to get my hair cut today at 3.30, it's 3.59. Made my appointment last week, but, uh, but the Lord saw fit for Texas or Dallas to get some ice and snow. So the barbershop is closed and he did send me a text message to say I need to reschedule and um, I just don't want to wait. So I've cut my hair myself with clippers. My husband has cut my hair at least once or twice with clippers. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and cut my hair at home and he can get his hair cut at the barbershop a little bit later. You ready, honey? Mm -hmm. So y'all can, this is my hair. This is my natural hair all washed and blowed out. If you ever go to the barber shop, make sure your hair is clean before you go. It, it, the barbers really, really appreciate it. This is a little stressful because again, each time I've ever cut all my hair off, it was, I felt like it was my, it was my choice. Now I don't really feel like I have a choice. I feel like it's, I'm kind of being forced because my hair has broken off a lot around the edges. I don't know why. And then it's thin um, a lot and then it's broken off See how you can see how short that is right there, broken off a lot in the top, and it's just uh, not as healthy. And this, uh, uh, it just, I got, it got to go. Anyway, so honey is gonna, he's home. Honey's gonna cut my hair for me, so I'm gonna hit and get the, uh, I'm gonna get a sheet to wrap around me, so I don't get hair all in my, in my shirt. You ready, honey? Yep. Okay, let me go get a sheet. Now you're in the video too. Okay, you ready? You're ready? Ah! <laughs> can you see, Shadia? I can see. Okay. Oh. There we go. All right, ready? Let me make sure we're rolling still. I'm nervous. Why are you nervous? I don't know. Yep. Getting stuff out of the way. Here we go. Ready? You yeah. ready, Shadia? Okay. Mm. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm trying to look in the mirror too. You don't want it shorter. You want a hand mirror? No, I can see it. Look at that, it's like a Wakanda warrior. Where the hair at? I ain't see it. It's kind of wadded up right here. <gasps> oh, that's a lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Absolutely not. That's a lot of hair. Okay. Oh, look, Shadia. Look at this hair. That's look. Oh my God. Look at me, honey. Oh, you're beautiful. <laughs> Love it. Look at this hair. Oh my God. See the mirror back there. I feel pretty. It feels so strange. I haven't felt my scalp in so long. I like it though. I'll probably let it grow just a little bit. Really? You see all my gray I hair right it. there. I got a swath of gray hair right there. Yeah. <laughs> now that being said, I'm still gonna wear my wigs. So please, boy, please, please don't uh, don't. Comment, I, I, I like your natural hair, or why are you wearing a wig or that? Uh, for me, wigs are like purses. They're like they're like shoes. It's an accessory. I, I want I want this look today. I, I don't want it tomorrow. So that's just the way it's going to be. So I have this one. I have another one. I already have another one ordered. So I'll I'll be wearing wigs sometimes. Sometimes I wear my natural hair. It depends on how I'm feeling when I start filming that day. Now, when I decided that I'm going to cut all my hair off, I knew that I probably want to go ahead and get my brows done because I, I, I'm, I'm a woman. I have my insecurities as well. So I want to make sure my brows are done every day. I don't have to worry about making sure they're, they look like sisters or at least look like they're in the same family. They're putting on my eyebrows every day when I get up because I don't have any hair because now you're going to really see all of my face. That's it. You're just going to get all this face. And... And I wanted to get my brows done. So I went to get my brows bladed and shaded. Um, it was not cheap. And there's a process of uh, mapping out the brows and then numbing to start the process. And then it's like, it was a three step numbing process, like numb, blade, numb, shade. And she was very, very thoughtful, asked a lot of questions. Um, and then I'll go back in another month and a half to fill in um, some spots um, that may have faded or make sure it's still the look that I want. And the uh, blading should last a year and a half to two years, depending on your skin, whether your skin is dry or oily. Girl, but I tell you, when it's itching, uh, it is itching. So you probably try kind of figure out why like, it looks greasy up here. I can't put any makeup near my brows at all. I have to put a, some A&D ointment on it every day and it's starting to scab and it's starting to heal and it itches really bad. So, but you can't scratch, I can't scratch it. So I got my brows done so that I make certain when I get my hair cut that my brows are done every day. And it's easier for me when I start to do my videos. I don't have to worry about trying to put my brows on and trying to make them match, <laughs> trying to make them match up as twins or even sisters. Sometimes. Most of the time I get it okay. Sometimes I, I just don't get it right. And it's just the nature of the beast of being human and not being a makeup artist. So I've tried, but yeah, sometimes I don't get it right. But I don't want to, I really don't want to have to struggle with that when my hair is um, short and it's just going to be a convenience. It, it really is. It's a convenience and it's something I decided I would treat myself with. Instead of getting these shoes, I'm just going to get my brows done. And if I like it at the end of the year and a half, two years, I'm going to go back and get it done again. That is that. But it's been, uh, it's, um, life has been fantastic. Oh, oh I didn't mean to mention our daughter was here over right after Christmas. Our youngest daughter was here. You I probably haven't seen much of Evie. She didn't like to be on camera, take a lot of pictures, but she did turn 16. By the time this picture, this video comes out yesterday, and she asked her daddy to do her some sweet 16 photo shoot and he did so 
Um, if she's if you're watching Evie, happy birthday! I'll show you all a, a picture of her. She's beautiful. She she looks just like her daddy. She looks just like her daddy to me. But um, that's all that's been going on. Anything coming up? Oh, I decided. You all know I love love perfumes. I did mix my perfumes today. It's really nice. I like this combination. I mixed the um, Montal Intense Cafe, which has a chocolate and uh, a coffee scent and, and, and some oud, a lot of oud with my Rouge Travel Guard by Dior, which is a very, very light fruity scent. So I wanted that fruity scent, but I wanted something to a little heavier because it's still cold and I love, I love this combination. Let me show you the bottle because y'all probably want to see the bottles. Here, here is this bottle. Here is this bottle. Let's see if my husband can see. Hopefully you can get it on camera, honey. But that is a really, really nice combination. And so because I love perfumes and I really want to add, <laughs> as if I don't have enough, I really want to add to my collection, but I don't believe in buying full size bottles without trying some stuff out first. Like that, I'm not wasting my money like that. So what I'm going to start doing is getting samples and getting um, discovery sets, which I love. So you can pay a fraction of the price and for like a, a line, depending on the line though, there, some can be very expensive. Like Dior has a um, discovery set where they'll have maybe five, somewhere between five to 10 of their most popular fragrances in, um, in sample size or even a little larger size. And you can try those out and determine whether you really like it. So you can smell it and you get to wear it and see what the CIG is and how long it lasts all day that sort of thing. So I'm going to start doing that. And I I'm, think I'm going to probably do one of those videos once a month. You all let me know if that's something you'd like to hear or something you'd like to see on my channel. I, I think it'll be fun for me anyway, so I can get to um, find me some more perfumes to add to my collection to the ones I already love. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all that's been going on. Uh, um, hopefully I can do another vlog soon. Now, no matter where you are in the world, I want you to have the most blessed day and thank you for joining me today. Bye-bye.